Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Friday, which means it's time for a new How to Bass. And today, I'm going to show you how to make this sound. Not that sound. This sound. This sound is used done using serum um, and a whole bunch of effects. The serum bit is... Um, Perhaps not the most momentous uh, part of this entire process, but it does do something very important that is quite integral to the sound. That actually, before Serum, the only plugin that I, I I knew could actually do it in this way was Citrus, and that this could apply itself in such a way for you know everything that happens inside Serum is quite awesome. Also, if the uh, Im Im image to the side here wasn't incredibly obvious, I have a new T-shirt. It's pretty awesome. I also have a new sample pack. Go to that link and look at stuff. Please, thank you. I hope that's not too obnoxious. I might I might make a smaller in future videos. It'll be super dated in like two years when there's that picture in this video. It's all like, oh, it's brand new, but no, it's oh, super old. Anyway, uh, so I'm using Patcher to make the effects, but Serum is actually outside of Patcher. I'm using Patcher as loaded as an effect. So here's what all the stuff that's Patcher is that's doing, and I will cover it. I'll talk about all of them, but let's first begin with what this sounds like without it. What's so special about that? Well, it has to do with what oscillator B is doing. This is um, a shape that I made myself, because you can do that in Serum. And uh, I have this uh, wavetable. This is um, one of the modular wavetables that I put out in How to Base 110? 109? I forget. It's it's the one that says modular in the title. And um, it's, around, it's around there. For those in the future who, you know, still are looking at this. Um, Anyway, in the giant list of warp modes, one of them is AM from B. It is also RM from B. And this is the thing that I was talking about that, Cir that Citrus could do that Serum now can too. I mean, it could from the beginning, but it's, it's like I said, I n there's no, no other plugin I know of that could do this particular effect as well as it can. So what's the difference between AM and RM, and what the hell does that even stand for? Well, RM stands for ring modulation, and AM stands for amplitude modulation, much like FM stands for frequency modulation. And it works in much the same way. In fact, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this thing. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Look at the list of stuff. Okay. And wave candy, just so we can look at precisely what it's doing. Put that over here. Change some parameters so that we can see things more clearly. Okay. So here I have oscillator A. I'm going to set um, AM. The difference between AM and RM is that RM, RM is a process that takes into consideration the zero line, the zero crossing in the center, which says that everything above it is positive and everything below it is negative, which, which means that if I were to ring modulate the saw wave by the saw wave, it would say that the saw wave would be on for, for how long it is positively and then it would be on negatively, which really translates to it being on twice. And in this particular example, I really only want to be on once per oscill per oscillation of the waveform. Uh, I got a link. I got to forget about this part. There we go. We got a waveform. Let's get something more complicated than this, though. Like, really anything. Sure. All right. So here we have, we've got our, we got our waveform. Now, when I engage ring modulation... You kind of see that not really much happens. But if I come in here and I do this, for example, it's a very sharp, shelfy kind of thing. Get rid of the randomness in the phase. Same thing over here randomness in the phase. Not everything is the same for every time. So we can kind of set it up in a, in a way that actually makes it seem to do the, what I wanted to do, which is to say that it's on for a portion of the wave, for, for, bleh, for a portion of the entire oscillation and then off for the rest of it. But if I select AM, it does this pretty much directly where the, the, what AM does is that it's pretty much all positive. It's not asymmetrical. It's just here's on and here's off. 
much like like a regular LFO, essentially only its oscillation rate. So that's what the ring modulation is doing. So if we have a really complex, really full waveform, not this guy, wrong button. Let's see, let's get um, this. So here's what this sounds like uh, without. Forgot the part where this is on. Just turn this off. I'm a smart person. There we go. Okay. Here's a more complicated complex waveform. I'm gonna turn on first ring modulation. You can kind of calibrate. It's not just full on on or off for either version. Of course, what I'm doing right now is, is perfectly sharp, and Serum, for this particular purpose, allows you to make it perfectly sharp. But if I wanted to make it not so sharp, I could do, say, like, this. Or, like, uh, let's move it, move it along a little bit, actually bring this down here. And make both ends a curve. You can do it. There we go. Now it's less sharp. But it's still pretty sharp. It takes a sound that is pretty pretty uh, smooth and full of itself, and it makes it sharper. At least in the way that I'm doing it. You can do much more complicated things with amplitude modulation or ring modulation, but this is the purpose by which I'm, I'm accomplishing what I'm doing. And in the case of this particular sound, I'm using this shape and modulating it with this shape at the full center, which means that it's more, doing more or less one than what I'm doing. Now, as a result of having done this, when we process it with all the various neuro accoutrements, that sharpness is preserved. I might have automated the ring, the AM. I don't think I did though. Nope, it seems I did not. So I, I just, I'm automating the, the, the wave table position inside the original serum and not much else. No, pretty much nothing else is happening inside, inside serum. Uh, I am also noticing that I have this on. So that, that's, that's contributing to the sound. Without it, it would sound like this. Not a huge difference, but it does <laughs> have a kind of an impact on that. But the, the, the real purpose of having doing this is that we want something that moves like what the wavetable does, and we want it to be as sharp as something like this. So while this thing can kind of sound sharp the way it does, it um it's so it's almost too sharp it also doesn't move very much so that's why i like doing this as well as much as i do so let's talk about what the patcher is doing now this is pretty standard fare when it comes to sort of the neuro processing that i do and this looks a bit complicated just because of the way that i've presented it inside the patcher but let's sort of break this down to what's actually happening this is this is this is essentially a separate sub right here so this really means that this there's this line that goes here it goes here straight line all the way through these guys this is there's not much like branching out going on here it's just it's literally just like these guys are all in a line and this guy's on top so the first step is a bandpass filter and a mouse filter big 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 whoop although a big part of how this sound is working out is what's going on inside the flanger i'm actually automating the delay and the depth which is creating that kind of fuzzy broken sound because this this this, this, this particular plugin is not really designed to have those parameters modified, you know, live. Uh, there's the right thing, which has its own internal moving, but when we're moving it ourselves and we're automating it, it has absolutely no smoothing, which means that it's going to kind of break and do some damage. But if we move it around and do it in time with a particular, with filtering in such a way that it is underneath not a not high frequency moment, then it sort of, it sort of protects itself. The value of doing that is mostly just that it, it the, the flanger does interesting things to the sound, clearly. And moving it around just makes it sound pretty cool. Um, there's not really a huge amount of, like, science-y science about, like, what specifically it's doing that I wanted to do. I just thought it sounded pretty pretty dope if I modulated the parameters. It's really all there is to that. Uh, it's going into this EQ, which is high-passing it after distortion, which is going into a compressor to... Uh, Bring it all to bring it back together with the sub, so that like, it's compressing with the sub, and then it's being distorted again, and it's being modulated again. This time with uh, a bandpass and two notches, and then it's being high passed again, and then the bass is going again into another compressor, and then it's being high passed and low passed. That's what this guy does. 
And this is not being separate subbed, although I probably could have just high pass after it, after that. But mostly it's the is the behavior of the high passing in here with there is sub that's creating the the, the tone that it, it does create. And then uh, this is just a this this EQ, this guy, that's this guy, and this is just some minor EQ changes at the end of it. I made the this the separate sub business afterwards, and then the high passing that whole thing. So that's um why that order is the way it is. I'm not going to go super into the specifics about these compressors. I guess I should. But the basic point of the compressors is that um, after the filtering, it gets it's super duper quiet because we have removed a majority of the frequencies. But let me we can use compression to kind of bring back the frequencies. And like how hard you want to, I used to bring it back pretty hard. I am bringing it back pretty hard right now, but I used to bring them back even harder. And uh, I just realized that this is there. That's not what I want. I want that. I want that. I want that. There we go. That's for streaming, not for you guys. Anyway, um, if you it, it, it's not super possible, but it is possible that if you bring it back too hard, you might as well have not filtered in the first place. But the purpose of sort of stacking, you know, here's some filtering, here's some filtering, here's some filtering. The whole point of that is that before that stage in the filtering, everything that we've done is essentially only there to change the character of the sound, not so much the actual modulation. Except for like this last guy here. Like this is pretty much true for this dude. Like the filtering we've done here, the modulation, all the stuff that happens there. This just creates a new character that we are now filtering with this guy. And then this is just icing on the cake, the high pass, low pass thing. This uh, whatever the last stage of filtering you have, the the main element in there, the band pass, the low pass kind of thing, is going to be what determines the primary sort of uh, rhythm of the sound. Depending on how hard you push the high pass, low pass. In this particular sound, the very beginning, I push it kind of hard. That's what this guy is. That's the high pass. Indeed. This is the last. This is the last uh, band pass. These are the notches. Actually, I guess these are notches. There's also notches. Well, that's the, those notches. So we have wavetable, band pass, notch, band pass, notch, notch. Low pass, high pass, and this is the flanger delay and the flanger depth, as I said here. That's what these automations are. A lot of people look at this giant stack of automation and they go, how do you know where everything is? Like, even if it is labeled, it's like band four, how do I know what that is? And um, if I were just to look at a project that someone else had done with all the stuff in here, there's no way I would know. But it's because I built it. You know, I, at first I started out, I made a high, a bad pass and a low pass and it was, or a bad pass and a notch. And it was only, it was only these two guys up top. At that, at that point, I just knew which one I made first. And so I know which one's which. And then I just build and build and build. And that's pretty much what the way it is. And I, I know my, I know my plan well enough to know that I can just sort of, I can create the order. And especially after I made it, what really clues me into which is what is the kind of automation that I've done here. Because like I said, the band passes are the one that create the, the rhythm of whatever uh, stage of filtering you have. And the notches are really about creating the character. It's just that once we create another band pass, it becomes the band pass and the notches are the thing that create the character. And then the new band pass is the one that creates the new rhythm. So that's, that's really what the notches are for. So in that case, the character movement of the notches are much larger and wider spanning. And then the band passes are a little bit shorter and j more, you know, janky, that kind of thing. And high pass, low pass looks pretty, pretty uh, special. You know, the low pass usually spends the time pretty high up and the, band, the high pass spends the time pretty low. Um, that's, so you can, there's, there's context clues for that purpose that you can use to sort of determine which is what. But I'm just telling you which is what, so it's not, it's not, not really... I really that dance is it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's this guy. That's how this works out. So to recap, the really the main point of this is that we're doing like all of these things are all stuff that I've I have achieved in previous how to bases. This is just band pass, low pa or band pass notch, filtering, distortion, compression, stack. You repeat it. You know, there's a flanger. I'm um, automating the flanger. There's high pass, low pass near the end. Lots of compression. That whole thing. That's at this point pretty regular. The, and even the 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 um, the ring modulation thing is something I've done before, but it's something I've done with Cirrus. Cirrus, wow, Citrus, both S things, with Citrus. And the fact that you could do this to a wavetable is really super cool because this means that you can create a modulation somewhere else and then you can apply this ring modulation at any stage of that because I could record, I can make a note and record like that. 
and then rank modulate it as a, as a wave table, which is super huge. Um, at least, you know, for my build order, because <laughs> we're playing StarCraft. Anyway, uh, this... Uh, this FLP, which contains only this, will be available. This is actually um, that drum and bass track I've been working on the last couple days. <coughs> last couple weeks, maybe. Um, but I'll include at least this. Because all these other ones are actually products from this, like this guy. I pitched it to that. But um, essentially what I did is I recorded this. I reversed it. And then I put reverb on the reverse, and then I recorded that, and then I reversed that, and that's what creates this. I've done a hot base on that as well. I've also uh, granulated it. And I've cut up both of those. So here's our beginning. Here's uh, some of the granulizing. Here's just the main sound. This is just straight up the main sound. And then I have lots of granulizing. And then more granulizing. Just so that you see how that stuff works in context. I am still, however, only going to give you this, just because these are things that I'm using myself for myself. But um, I had done a how to base on granulizing, uh, specifically like that. I think I call it a big, big granulized mess modulator. That's the one. That's the title of the how to base that used that particular process on a similar sound. It's it's the same process. Like w when I granulize stuff, it really is all the same process. I pick the three parameters that I use, and then I modulate them, which for your benefit is. Uh, this guy, this guy, this guy, these three guys. Turn on turn on looping, mess around with these guys, turn attack all the way down, and just kind of do this. And you'll quickly find some sweet spots. And this is C5, so the sample is a regular thing. Although, I have also messed with pitch in the past. It's just that this time I did not. Um, so that should be fairly straightforward. But you're still getting this. Just this. If you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day. Buy my t-shirt. And I want to take my back. Just buy things. <laughs>